Ladies and gentlemen, I've got good news. I've got bad news. The good news is, I think I'm about to show you one of the greatest chess games ever played. The bad news is, I think I'm about to show you one of the worst chess games ever played. This game made it to the absolute top of the charts on Reddit a couple of days ago, and it was posted in the Chess Beginner subreddit, and it's definitely a real game. But credit to the individual, they did not drop a link to their channel because I think they would have gotten like hundreds of messages. This is the immortal King March game. Our protagonists are nameless because I don't know their names, the lost heroes of the battle. Uh, the person playing with black, we've named them Giga Chad McNubovich. It's an Eastern European name. And person playing with white is unfortunate opponent. Now you can tell their elos are slightly different. J just don't pay any attention to that. Just pay attention to what's going to happen on the board. You're going to learn a few things, but for the most part, you might pee yourself from laughter. The game begins with e4. You do not need to pee yourself just yet. Unless you have some sort of condition, in which case, pee away. e5. Symmetrical king spawn. So far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good. And now white plays king e2. No. Um, knight to f3. Very natural move. Simply attacking the pawn in the center. Pawn to d6. Not the best move, but it's a move. This is known as the Philidor defense. But given what's about to unfold in front of you, I don't think that this person knew that this is called the Philidor defense. Just a good rule of thumb for beginners, don't block in your bishop so early, okay? So, don't block in your bishop so early, uh, and uh, instead of that, develop your knights. But okay, d6, I love white's next move. Bishop c4, simple, nice, natural, very easy development of your pieces. And here black does in fact play the move knight c6. So far so good, I mean nobody's done anything stupid yet. All right, well, I think it's time for all of us to take a collective uh, sip of water or tea. I've got some seltzer here. Because, uh, uh, cause yeah, the, the fun's done. Uh, the fun's done. It, it, it's about to get real slimy. So in this position, white can play castles or white can expand and put two pawns in the center. Now, if you are able to put two pawns in the center in chess, you should. I love this move. And the good thing for white is that the trade is fine because you're still making progress in the position with development. And two trades are also fine. Because your queen being in the center is not dangerous. Attacking it with pawns is a little bit too much. Your queen slides back, your queen is safe, and you have good control of the light squares. So as long as a knight cannot attack your queen in the center of the board, it's okay to put the queen there for the most part. Now, I told you we're about to get nice and slimy really quickly. Black should either take and finish developing or do something like that. Black plays the move knight a5. Now, knight a5, I must admit, is definitely not the stupidest move I've ever seen. In fact, it attacks the bishop. Like, there is a threat, all right? And to Black's credit, our protagonist's credit, white does not play the best move because Black wants to take the bishop. Black doesn't mind if they take the bishop on that square. It's still a bishop, all right? It would have been better for white to actually go the other direction where they wouldn't have gotten their bishop taken. But bishop b3 is played, and naturally, Black took it because Black wanted to get rid of the bishop. Here, white recaptures with the correct pawn. It's better to take with the flank pawn, even over here, because even if you castle, you're safe. The rook is open, and it's better to keep your pawns together versus taking away from the center and creating some gap between the pawns. So A takes B3. Now, again, knights before bishops. You would like to develop your knights before your bishops. Why? Because you probably know where your knight is going. You don't know if the bishop wants to go there. Plus, don't have a blind spot for the pawns in the center of the board, which a lot of beginners do. Just take alleviate the pressure, facilitate your own development. White plays the move, uh, excuse me, black plays the move bishop g4. Again, don't hate this move, but deal with this. Now white plays h3. Now the reason why the move h3 is not good is because in this very, very rare case, taking this knight wins you the pawn on d4 probably. Because after bishop takes knight, you really don't want to just give away a bishop for no reason, but you would be winning a pawn, which is nice. It's nice to win a pawn. And the alternative for white is to go here and open up the king for the future. The computer doesn't hate it, but the computer is a piece of trash. So, black doesn't do that. Black plays bishop h5, and now white chases the bishop out. Pawn to g4 says, get out of here. 
Normally a bad move. In this particular case, the computer likes it, but I would not recommend for beginners to advance pawns like this because you're going to weaken your king. Bishop to g6. Hitting the pawn in the center. White develops. Now black takes. Queen comes out. Remember how a moment ago I told you it's okay to put the queen in the center of the board as long as a knight cannot attack it? Because the move c5 is only a very temporary dopamine move, and in reality it causes a lot more irreparable damage to the position. I was not exaggerating. I used to teach four-year-olds how to teach chess. I bet none of you watching this are four years old, and if you are, then where are your parents? And if your parents are close, well, then I won't swear for the rest of the video. I used to teach four-year-olds chess. I know how to deconstruct concepts, whether you're four, eight, 20, 30, 70, 90. And if you're watching this above the age, age of 90, congrats. I had no idea you even knew how to turn on an electronic, God bless. So, c5 attacks the queen on d4, and the queen goes up to d5. Now, black is significantly worse. If you look at the evaluation bar, it says that white is plus 1.8. The reasons for that. Number one, black doesn't have a lot of development. Black's pieces are all pretty much on the back rank. Number two, black has a lot of weaknesses. White has not just more development, but good development, high quality development, all right? Farm race, grass-fed beef, okay, Wagyu. Those are not the same thing. Now, you have this hanging, so you should probably defend it, and then you should kick the queen out, develop castle. Defend it, kick the queen out, develop castle. Develop castle, okay? Nope. If you had the attention span of a person that could last six and a half minutes, you are about to witness one of the greatest things I have ever seen in my life. This person captioned this Reddit post, I'm pissing myself. And frankly, so did I when I saw this game. Black here so that the pawn was hanging and played pawn to b6. The problem is the move pawn to b6 catastrophically loses this game. It loses this game instantly because white was not just threatening to hit the pawn. White was threatening to get in, period. Okay? This is like seeing a robber and opening the window for them because that way they might not break the window. So now the queen goes to c6 and we have a giant problem because black has no development, so black can only block and lose the rook or run the king forward. Now, perhaps black is a Gotham Chess subscriber. And what you are about to witness is perhaps just one of the greatest runs of the king I have ever seen. This is ridiculous. This was uh, a track meet. She's a runner, she's a track star. King e7, and the black king goes on a spiritual journey. In this position, white has forced checkmate in 15 moves. Knight d5 check. King to e6. Knight to g5 check. If you sacrifice your queen, it's made in 11. If you go up, it's mate in two. It is made in two after the move f4, and then it's checkmate in one. Alternatively, it's bishop f4, and then white can even play long castles checkmate. But if that were to happen, we would not have a YouTube video on our hands. So instead, we have f4 check, king to d4. The king has arrived for the bishop to develop and deliver a checkmate. The rook can go to a4, the queen can go back, and black would have to block and it would be mate. But in this position, white plays the worst move possible. Because like I said, you could accidentally checkmate your opponent here so many different ways. Knight back to f3 and then double check, mating the king in the center. Do you know how many accidental checkmates there are in this position? White plays pawn to c3, thinking it's mate. White probably played the move c3 and then was shocked there was no thing that went Black now has only one legal move and it's to move the king to where the pawn used to protect, king to d3. Now, I'm going to be very honest with you. There are still no less than about 78 different checkmate in two or three in this position. The black king, or any king for that matter, white, green, red, purple, should not be on the third rank of the enemy side when there has only been two trades. Okay, this should not be happening. White in this position should give a check. If you give a check, you might accidentally checkmate your opponent. Queen b5, knight e3 mate. Rook h2 is made, for God's sake. Do you see how many accidental checkmates there are? In this position, white plays a move that is not a check. 
it's not a check. But because the king has wandered over there, it is checkmate no matter what. It doesn't matter. You can play bishop d2, the evaluation still looks like a BMW model. It's an M5, okay? Black in this position, for the record, plays one of the most clutch defensive moves they could possibly play. Black in this position plays knight e7. This is a genius move, okay? This was not very genius. This is genius because it hits two of the major white pieces and maybe white is going to take a little bit of time to take. And maybe white is going to take their eye off the, off the prize. But no, after knight to e7, white realizes, wait a minute, I don't have time for this, and plays queen to b5 check, and that forces the king even deeper into the territory. I have never seen something like that. I have never seen a king standing on c2. This doesn't even look real. It doesn't even look real. It doesn't look real. I don't know what to tell you. Now, once again, there are no mates in two. There's no, there's no mates in one. There's not even a mate in two. There is something like 470 different combinations of mate in three in this position. White plays rook c1 check and loses the pawn on b2. The king has now entered b2. I mean, this is utterly ridiculous. White can play king up to e2, and there's a mate. I legitimately think any legal move here for white is still mate in three. Think about that. White might be able, nah, this might not be, okay? Losing the queen in one move might not be, but literally 95% of white's legal moves end the game in a few moves. Knight b4 is probably mate in three. Knight f3 is mate in 3. Rook h2 is mate in 3. Anything is mate in 3. King f2 is mate in 4. Oh my gosh. Undeveloping the queen to f1 is mate in 9. Um, in this position, white plays the move queen a4. The king is surrounded. That's it. It's hopeless. It's absolutely and utterly hopeless. And black is going to lose in a very embarrassing fashion. In this position, black plays once again... A couple of moves ago, black played knight e7, which was an excellent move, creating their own defensive chances. Now knight takes knight. Now, folks, please, for the love of God, understand that it's still so over. I mean, it is so over. Rook h2, all right, queen a1, rook b1, rook c2 is mate in a few, for God's sake, because of this. King goes to d3, and now you have queen b1 mate. You have queen b1 mate. Okay, so queen a1 check. Once again, black has only one legal move. Black takes on b3. Now, white has many different checks here. Rook b1 check. King goes back. Now it's mate again. The only escape square for the black king is the move king to d3. Queen a6 ends the game on the spot. Black would have to go here, and that would be gg. Or you can play queen a2, or you can play queen a4. Queen a4 check, king to d3. And again, you can go ring around the rosy here. The king could go to c2. You have mate on b2, or you have mate on c1. Queen b5 check absolutely must be played. In fact, it is the only check that you have. I guess you also have queen a6, but then after king c2, you know, you got to repeat the position. But in this position, white decides to take on d5. And you may notice that the evaluation bar has dropped a lot. That's because in the journey of chasing the king, white lost a little bit of material. I know it wasn't obvious, but white actually lost some pawns and white lost, uh, well, for a long time, white had no knight. So right now it's just a two pawn advantage for black. In this position, black has one and only one defensive move. And that move is queen to e8, which is so clutch. Always look for checks. Queen e8 hits the king and the queen. And after takes, takes, anywhere the king moves, black is just winning. Black's winning. Black's king is no longer in any danger. I am the danger, right? Queen e8 is so clutch. What a move. Now white here spirals. Spirals out of control, forgets that they have a queen, and they lose the queen in one move to queen a4 check. <sighs> Except, my friends, black didn't take the queen. King d1 loses for a different reason. It doesn't lose to the move queen takes queen. 
it loses to queen e2 check, king to c1, queen takes d2. Not only did white not win this game, not only did white blunder the queen, white got checkmated. White spent no less than 15 moves hunting the black king in positions where the black king was at his most vulnerable with checkmates bursting out of the stockfish evaluation mates in one mates in two mates in three and four and five but it all came down to the silly queen perched on the outskirts of the board and black found queen e8 check and Queenie too. And at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it was the king chased out of his kingdom, running around the board that gave the queen a helping hand to defend the E2 square, and more importantly, the D2 square. One more time. I'm just going to let this game play on autoplay. The opening was good. White expanded, weakening, but tolerable. Black weakened their position and white infiltrated with the queen. And that's all she wrote. The walk of shame for the black king to the other side of the board with multiple mates. White missed them, but white caged the king putting him in an inescapable box from which he had no business running out of. And the second that Black got an opportunity, not only did Black save the game, Black won a queen, but more importantly, Black won by checkmate. Now get out of here.